Dylan's picking out an interface because he needs a new one. And so we're going to go through um, the things you look for. And I kind of want to do this in a couple segments. So the beginner stuff, uh, some of the intermediate, some of the prosumer, and then the pro. So mm. we're going to start a beginner. And a great way to start this is with God of Metal asking, what do you think about the cheapest Behringer audio interface, the Behringer Euphoria UMC 202 HD? Now, here's the big thing about interfaces is... The only main... one, only one big thing, but <laughs> well, okay. At this price point, the big thing about interfaces is your sample rate, um, bit depth, obviously, but it's also the EIN of an interface at this price point. You need to make sure it's quiet and it does better than 16, uh, uh bit. yeah, 16 bit. Sorry, wow, 44 one. It needs to do better than that. Well, so... okay, 44 one is fine. 16 bit no okay. um especially especially if you're not confident in what you're doing which a lot of people but are, god of metal is probably recording music so 16 bit um you know 44 one probably isn't great no so. 24 bits for sure and it's honestly i mean with a decent interface like a 2i2 or something in that price range it's not hard to find 24 bit um, no. In the in the super cheap, like how expensive is the Behringer? Let's start it's there. It's the Not cheapest Behringer available. So it's obviously like fifty dollars. So let's I'm look guessing. at that. Let's look at the specs for that. You keep talking about what makes what makes this stuff okay. UMC so I think 22. one thing that's really important to understand about an interface, um, in order to get like when you're looking at a spec sheet for oh. an interface, is an interface really is a combination of things. An interface is converters, an interface is preamps, an interface is a global section, a monitor section of some sort. There's a lot of different pieces that make up an interface, and all of them have their own sort of specifications. They're all just interconnected. Um, so when they're talking about equivalent input noise, it's usually pertaining to the microphone pre's inside the interface. Um, converters, it's, it's not usually a big deal. With converters, you generally just talk about it as dynamic range. Yeah. Some converters, some of the pricey converters will have a separate thing for EIN, but that's kind of dumb because they could just say dynamic range. And it's like, okay, well, dynamic range. So I just have to take the highest level that it can take <laughs> and uh, subtract, you know, whatever, 121 dB, whatever the dynamic range is, and I'll have my noise. Um, but so what do you got? Um, well, so uh, Bangs actually filled in. The M track solo is better than the UMC 22 or UM2. The UMC 22 and UM2 is 16 bit and great EIN. The M track solo is 50 still 16 bit and that's the thing is it worth it for somebody getting into audio to skip over the bare bones entry level interface to try to get the 24 bit or the 48 kilohertz sample I, rate? I i have always been a believer in the idea that um don't buy cheap because you're just going to end up spending more money replacing it in the two years anyway so save you know a little bit save the uh, wait a wait maybe a year Spend the extra fifty, hundred fifty dollars. Get the get the one that's going to last you longer. I think future proofing your setup as much as you can. Your use case for your interface does matter. If you're a podcaster and sixteen bit doesn't matter because you're a podcaster, you're recording voice. Um, the P4 is a great option, but if you are a musician, a P4 doesn't do you a lick of good. Uh, if you want to start a band and you don't have a guitar, you need to buy a guitar. You go yeah. out and buy a cheap guitar. Um, and yes, there is something to be said about just get something and start recording. Um, when I look at the the progress or when I look at some of um, what we're telling you, it's, it's on the premise that you have at least a base amount to be able to spend. You don't need to go out and buy an SM7B. Um, and that's what a lot of people think. Okay, I'll get an SM7B and I'm going to get a Behringer and that'll be fine. Why don't you get an SM58 and buy a Scarlet then so you have a better shot at things? Because a lot of people's budgetary, um, you, oh, you, oh, you're just telling me to buy the nice stuff. Well, why are you sitting there with an SM7B? Why yeah. did you go and buy a $400 microphone when you didn't need to? So I yeah, think it's... You know, uh, live... Uh... Live within your means. I think somebody, I heard somebody say that this week and I was like, yeah, no, that's true. I mean, yep. going and buying, you know, uh, managing your budget accordingly, look, doing research like this, figuring out, okay, does a 58 sound 
close enough to a 7B? Yeah. Is it a lot cheaper? Yeah. If you're looking for a mid-range interface, now we've already gone over the entry-level crap, and I say crap lovingly. Um, you're looking at the is a little bit more than 44.1. You're looking at more than 16-bit. But when you <laughs> get into mid-range, that stuff is if uh, uh, you should be having decent so, sample rate, good bit depth. So what are you you're, looking for? It, if you're looking for mid-range, you're probably looking for mid-range for a couple of reasons. <clears throat> One, you're looking for mid-range because you're doing like a podcast or a show that has multiple people, at which point you're looking for channel count. Yep. Um, or you're a musician and you're recording instruments, which are going to require a few things. One is as low an EIN as possible because instruments are much quieter generally than the human voice. Um, you're also going to look for some interesting routing features. There are certain interfaces, the Scarlet's a good example of this actually, that have their, their included drivers include a pretty powerful mix engine um, that you can use to route signals around. You can use to, to add you know, DSP effects before your DAW to save on processing power. Little things like that that um, give you more flexibility with your workflow. Um, for example... One thing that you're going to look for in a mid-range interface is latency, or I should say a lack of latency, um, because this is something I actually watched that, uh, for anyone that follows Dave Rat on YouTube, a really awesome live sound engineer um, and uh, just general audio guru all in all, he did a video talking about the, the psychological difference just a millisecond makes between when you hear a signal coming back into your headphones versus when you say it or when you make the sound. It has a huge psychological impact. Even zero milliseconds to one milliseconds latency has a really big um, has a really big impact on your performance and how you're perceiving how you're sounding in real time, which is a, kind of a, a direct workpiece indicator to your performance. Blah 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 blah. Um, so a big way to combat that is what protocol are you using? Are you using USB two? Don't use USB two. USB two is bad news bears. Um, and don't get, and Aiden and I have talked about this before, do not get sucked into USB-C. USB-C is a plug, not, not a protocol. A protocol. Yeah. It is not a protocol. You can have a USB-C interface that is still just humming along at USB 2, which has horrible bandwidth um, for audio. I would say USB 3, Thunderbolt is amazing. Thunderbolt, you can get your latency down to fractions of a millisecond. Um, I'm looking at a few Thunderbolt interfaces right now that... Uh, that are very promising as far as latency that can go down to like four samples latency. Yeah. Just for perspective, you're lucky if you get 256 samples out of a USB <laughs> two interface. But if you're looking at a mid range interface, I would say your focus sh should shift from um, your sample rate and your bit depth or your sample rate and your sample size to things like latency, things like input noise, dynamic range, uh, flexibility of the software component of it. I, I think there's a, like a few other points that I would say is, again, we were talking about mic preamps and gain. So the preamp part of an uh, uh, interface, I'd say you want at least 55 dB of gain. A lot of people say 60. They're only saying 60 because of this fucker. Um, this is the only reason they're saying, <laughs> this is the only reason they're saying 60. Um, I would say for most microphones, other than those that don't have transformers in, I hope that guy that said that comment is on this stream right now. Cause I want to throw down about that. I don't think he ever, uh, ever came back to my channel. No, I don't so I say 50 to 55 DB of gain. And the, the reason I say that is because if you say 60, 65, 75 DB of gain, you're really kneecapping your choices. Yeah. Um, because most interfaces now are targeting the 45 to 55 gain range kind of area because condenser mics are, are what everyone's targeting now. So I would say that. Then the last thing that I will say, and this is an important thing to consider with interfaces too, is expandable I.O. Oh, yeah. So there's interfaces, and you, you know, people probably see it, and you know they're like, what the hell is this? Like interfaces that offer you know, AS3 or AES3, uh, SPDIF, uh, Toslink, whether it's light pipe or SPDIF, or you know things like even a some interfaces have MATI and AES67 uh, coax and um, optical inputs and, and uh, Ethernet. Those are really useful because if you decide, like if 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 the interface has those kinds of things, chances ADAT. are it's it's a good interface. Yes, ADAT yeah. light pipe. Yeah. Um, and I will say for those things, those expandability options are great because you're not paying for the preamps and for the conversion circuitry right out of the gate. You're buying an interface that can support those. And then down the road, you can, there's tons of rack mount eight unit, uh, eight preamp preamps 
that have ADAT outputs. So yep. you can just plug those into your interface. Audient has one, the ID22, I think is the, the name of it. Um, the, the Audient series of, uh, they're kind of like the, uh, the audio fuse. They're designed like a... They're designed like a desktop sort of mount. I've been considering them for my next one as long as they're more than USB two. That's uh, um, I've been cons- I, I don't I don't know. I've never owned one. I don't know what they are, but I know everyone says good. And again, I've I've had a lot of experience with Audient as well. Their products they make good stuff. I just don't like the interface style. Like I do prefer the AudioFuse Studio style to the Audient style, but which is which is what? Uh, well, the uh, well the ID forty four is what I'm referencing. That was the one that I was looking at. Well, isn't that, isn't that, de- it's the same. It's a desktop. Yeah, I know, it's, but it's the style, the knobs. I don't like the look of oh. it as much. Are you getting, you're going into there. I thought you talking about like rack man. mount. They were talking about like rack mount versus, well, yeah, again, if it, if it doesn't work for your workflow, you know, that's, yeah. that's a, definitely a selling Here's, point. 